This is Public Resource. TDM Today Show with Roger Magulas. Hey, Roger, how are you? Good, how are you? Uh, good, good, good. Hey, listen, I'm trying to understand about word vectors. Um, I've heard about word to vec for example. Can you explain what that is? Sure. So word to vec actually was pretty revolutionary in a lot of ways. And what it did is it took a corpus, a bunch of documents, and try to make sense of them using a, a neural network. And it actually wasn't a very deep neural network. And what it was able to do is turn words into a vector, which is just a, a mathematical, uh, like a line, uh, a, and it's associated with direction. And when it looks at the corpus, it was able to have these kind of numerical representations that you could then do math on to figure out things that were close to each other. And what that's good for is synonyms. So an example might be uh, like a man is the woman as king is the queen. It would figure out those kind of relationships. Or if there was uh, countries mentioned, it might know that the Scandinavian countries would are close together. And if you ever talk to anyone who's doing word to vec, you'll hear them talk about cosine distances. And a vector is a, a num, I know, line. Uh, the equation of a line, and if the equations of the lines, the cosines are close to each other, then they're more likely synonyms, they're more likely used in the same context. So it's a nice way to look at a document, a, a bunch of documents, and make some sense of it. So is this analyzing two words next to each other, or are we looking at entire sentences? How, how do we figure out that, you know, this, this is a synonym to that? Right. So it is looking at, like all neural networks is a little mysterious, but it does look at proximity or co-location of words in a text. And it starts thinking that, thinking isn't the right word, it starts having math that brings those things together because they're more likely to be near each other than in documents and, and words that aren't related to each other. And so you start Almost, again, you know, neural networks are so funny because the metaphor is to the mind, but it starts associating in a mathematical way that these words often appear together. And so you can develop this relationship. Depending on the size of the corpus, depends on how accurate that kind of thing is. Okay, and are, are you using word to vec in your analysis? We are not yet, but we probably will at some point. And it's a time, it takes some time to get word to vec going. It doesn't always work with long documents, and we have long documents. It, a big corpus isn't a problem, but with long documents, things get a little um, like dispersed because there's a lot of concepts being covered. So it'll be a great place to experiment and, and see what happens. This is a lot harder than finding unigrams, right? With unigrams, you just go through every word. It sounds like here we're doing math on word pairs. Yes, it's creating a big, a big matrix of sorts that puts the relationship between every word. As you can imagine, in a large corpus, that starts getting monumentally big. And when you can't do that in memory, which we, there, there isn't enough RAM to do that in a computer memory, you start running into time scale issues. And it, that's one of the reasons we put that off, uh, because we can do in parallel the uh, processes for engrams. So are tools like BERT and Hugging Faces the same as word to vec Are they doing the same thing? So people, I, I think word to vec came out about seven years ago. And as people got more sophisticated, uh, BERT is a kind of a famous transformer. Hugging Face is a, a consortium or, or some kind of organization that actually packages BERT in it. And what BERT does is provides a lot more layers of the neural network and therefore a lot more context. 
And what Bert is particularly uh, adept at is kind of figuring out what the next word might be in a sequence of words. It also does things like synonyms and so forth. What it added is another layer of dimensionality to the vectors. So the vectors are just more complicated math than before. And you call all of these transformers. Is, is that the term? Yeah, transformers, it, I'm not really sure why they're called transformers, but they, tr they do transform words into numbers. And then that's what you have. They also call, they're, people refer to them as word embeddings or that you added the embeddings. Now, you can almost imagine like uh, the sentence sits there and then below it are these dimensions of what those words mean. That's uh, type of word it is, noun, verb, whether it's an entity, um, and then you start getting into things like how close it is to other words and, and what that might mean to kind of the semantics of what's being presented. Well, there you have it. This has been the TDM Today Show with Roger Magula. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Our work at Public Resource is made possible by a generous grant from Arcadia. Arcadia, a charitable fund of Lisbeth Rousing and Peter Baldwin. Additional support provided by contributions from citizens like you. Thank you for your support. Public Resource is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation with headquarters in the state of California and dedicated to the principle that access to knowledge is a human right.